Hey everybody, I'm Melissa Miller and welcome to the 28 day Get Higher Challenge. It is day one. We are kicking this thing off today. If you're trying to get a job in cybersecurity, whether you're new to the field, you're trying to pivot from another field, or you're already in cybersecurity and looking for uh, that next role, hey, we're here today, 28 days worth of content to help you get hired in cybersecurity. Welcome to day one. This is the first day of the 28 day Get Hired Challenge. Each day we are releasing a new video covering one of the topics from this book, Cybersecurity Career Guide on Manning Publications. I am really excited. I'm hoping that you'll each and all of you find value in these videos. It is my mission to help you get hired in cybersecurity. So, we're starting off today pretty simple. We're gonna talk about kind of the basics. What is cybersecurity and what is its role in our world today? I know that sounds basic and you're thinking, I, I, I'm just trying to get a job. Why are we going back and talking about all these basics? But here's the reality. There are so many misconceptions about what cybersecurity is. There are so many people who have different views and different ideas and and perspectives on what they believe cybersecurity is. And that's great, there's no right answer as you're gonna see. But it's important that we level set. It's important that we understand the background of where this industry came from so that you can understand as you're looking for a role and you're talking in some cases to people who've been in this industry for 20, 30 years or more about why they should hire you. It's great if you can understand the world that they came from. And indeed, the very first chapter of the book, that's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about what is cybersecurity and where did it come from? Cybersecurity, it's kind of a, it's a term that doesn't really have a good definition. I mean, sure, we could go out to the internet, we can look it up on Wikipedia or just on Google, see what Webster has to say about it. There's not really a good, definition or one, you know, common definition I think everybody uses. In fact, a lot of times you'll see another term out there referenced called information security. And when you ask people what is information security versus what is cybersecurity, look out because you're going to start wars over this. I have, I brought it up and I'll tell you what, even when I wrote the book, I got all sorts of differing opinions. Some people telling me I was dead wrong about what the difference was between cybersecurity and information security. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's all pedantic. What we care about is what is this industry about and is it even an industry at all? Should it be an industry at all? We're gonna talk about that too. But let's start at the beginning. Let's think about where did this idea of information security or cybersecurity, for now I'm gonna use them synonymously, where did this even start? You know, we, we can go back. I always tell people, in my opinion, I think it really it began in about 1961. Researchers in the Computation Center at MIT created the Compatible Time Sharing System. It was basically an IBM mainframe that they were trying to create exactly as the name would imply, time sharing where multiple users 
could share time on the same system to run various different computations, models, things, whatever it was that they were working on. And so in part, in order to enable this, they created a password protected system because you see, everybody was kind of limited in the amount of resources they were allowed to use. So 1961, they created this system. They, they added, you know, password protection to it. So that's kind of where we start to see the beginnings of this idea of information or cybersecurity. Now, the funny thing, for those of you that are living in this world today and you, you know all about different computer breaches and stuff, it was in 1962, it wasn't even a whole year later, that one researcher, Alan Scherer, decided he really wanted to find ways to get more time on the system than he was supposed to be permitted. And what he discovered was that he could print off the password file. So that's what he did. He actually printed it off. He went and he picked it up the next day and he found, hey, I he had all the passwords for everybody on the system. And he was able to use those to gain extra access to the system and, and use more time from the system. So that's 1961. Now you fast forward about 10 years and we've got this thing called ARPANET. Have you heard of that? I bet you've heard of what we call it today and that's the internet. ARPANET was this research network and it also expanded into the military as a way to just connect disparate networks all around the country and eventually all around the world so they could share information and, and, and connect them in a way that wasn't centralized so that there, there were different paths for communication. And that's later what became what we today know as the internet. And as I'm sure you're all well aware, we've got all sorts of security issues and considerations that we've had to apply ever since. Now let's fast forward another decade and a half, and we're at 1986. 1986 is kind of a, a big deal for information security or cybersecurity because it was in 1986 that the US federal government passed the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. This was the first real codification of protecting systems, computer systems, from people who might seek to gain unauthorized access to them. It made it a crime. And this, is, this, this was revolutionary. And part of what came along with that was funding for CERT, or the Computer Emergency Response Team at Carnegie Mellon. This was a team that still exists today, and they're meant to be kind of on that front line responding to what we today would refer to as cybersecurity incidents or attacks. So the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, 1986, all right? Two years later, another I hesitate to call it red letter date in information security, but the Morris win. This was the first real example we had of a self-propagating computer virus. See, Robert Morris discovered, oh, he, he found a vulnerability or a security flaw in the Unix operating system. And he wanted to see if he could create the software that would replicate. Now, the problem was, you know, he was using this flaw to replicate software from one computer to the next to the next. And it was, it was a good natured experiment, but the issue was it kind of got away from him. He lost control of it and it went crazy and it, it spread all over the place and started to cause system issues. And so he was tried under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act for crimes. So these are some of the roots. Now, of course, we can go through the world of hackers and we're gonna get into that in our next episode. But I tell you all this because all of these things are going on in the mid to late 80s and then in the early 90s, we see the internet come into being. It's released to the public and that's where we start to see information security really take off in terms of businesses. Now, it had existed you know, since you know, probably mid to late 20th century, businesses were already implementing teams that managed access to their mainframes and things like that. But it was later on as we started getting into the mid 80s and the early 90s with the internet now that we had to think about things in a very different light. And so cybersecurity or information security as we called it at the time was dedicated 
to protecting the data systems within our organizations. And that's where this thing we call cybersecurity has grown from. Now, you will find different people who will argue, is cybersecurity a subnet of information security? Is information security a subnet or a subset of cybersecurity? I would argue it's the latter. I look at it as information security is very specific. Now, terminology wise, if you look at the just the terms itself, it sounds like it should be the opposite way, right? Information security be really, really broad, and cybersecurity be really focused on just online security related to the internet. The reality is though, if we look at what traditionally was referred to as information security, it was that thing inside the organization. It was that group that really handled protecting the data systems within that system or within that company. When we talked about cybersecurity, well, that started to form, of course, when the internet came about and we started to see what we know today as cyber attacks. But that's gotten broader, right? Now we think about cybersecurity in a lot of different contexts because it's not just business anymore. We have to think about how cybersecurity applies to society. And so we've seen certainly attacks against our federal government, attacks against critical uh, infrastructure, things like pipelines. And so as we see that, we, we see the broadening of what cybersecurity is encompassing. And then we hear about things like social engineering and, and how cybersecurity professionals are being leveraged to protect people against maybe people who aren't even attacking the computer systems themselves, but they're attacking the users as ways to gain access to the computer systems. And this is why I say, even though the words sound like it should be the opposite, cybersecurity really has kind of become that concept that discusses the overall protection of our digital world from attackers. And information security typically still refers to more what goes on within specific organizations. So these are all really important concepts but let's look for a minute and let's just talk about what are some of the common responsibilities of cybersecurity professionals. So one of the first ones that we see is, and these are just examples, but monitoring for attacks across the various systems. This is what we'll, we'll see later. We'll talk about it in terms of security operations and incident response. You'll hear those terms a lot. These are where day to day, we've got people 24 seven who are monitoring systems, looking for attackers, trying to break in and then responding to those attacks. So we're responding to successful attacks sometimes. If someone breaks into our systems, this is where we hear about incident response and digital forensics. We'll talk more about those in coming episodes as well. And then this is one, this is the one that gets a lot of attention. People think about assessing systems and people for security weaknesses that we call vulnerabilities. This is where we get into the idea of penetration testing or ethical hacking as it's been called in the past. And this is where a lot of people, when they think about cybersecurity, that's what they get focused on. Um, I think a lot of the people I talk to who want to get into a career in cybersecurity, they talk about they, they want to be a hacker. But there's more. As we're discovering those vulnerabilities, we need to be tracking and validating them and reporting them so that somebody can fix them. Sometimes that's the information security or the cybersecurity team. Sometimes that's other teams within IT or within the business lines that we're working with. It might be software vendors that we're talking to. It might even be people within the federal government who are helping to address these things. And of course, as part of that, then we have to be working with developers on practices for how they can even develop secure software. So that the software they create doesn't contain those security flaws or those vulnerabilities. And we refer to this oftentimes as application security. So again, coming episodes, we're gonna talk more about that. And of course, when we think about the idea of like security engineering, we're talking about designing and deploying security measures or controls as we often refer to them. These are those technologies, the, the processes, the things that we employ within our organizations, within our government, wherever, to try to defend us from cybersecurity attacks. And then there's working with executive leaders to secure budgeting for security. So when we start talking about cybersecurity leadership, we'll get into this. These are responsibilities that fall on us as cybersecurity professionals. 
And then auditors. Auditors are critical because they're the ones that are going to look at us and we need to verify for them that, hey, we are doing the things that we say we're doing. We're doing the necessary things to be constantly maintaining and providing a more secure environment. And then finally, of course, maintaining various security systems. This is where we think about all of those technologies that we've employed. Someone's got to maintain those every day. So these are the types of things that we're talking about when we think about the types of responsibilities. Now, those are just some examples. Of course, there are many, many, many responsibilities that cybersecurity professionals are you know, a, a part of on a daily basis. So as we continue our 28-day Get Hired Challenge, we're going to dig into all of these. I can't wait. I hope you'll stick with me. We've got lots of great content coming for you. But I promised you, each day I'm giving away one free copy of this book. So here's how we're going to do it. I need you to drop in the comments below what is your definition of cybersecurity. And then we're going to randomly pick one of those commenters and that person is going to win a copy of this book. Now, if you don't win a copy of the book, or if you want to check out other titles from Manning, I got a great deal for you. Manning has agreed to provide 35% discounts off of all of their titles. All you need to do is visit Manning, manning.com and enter this discount code 28dayschlmiller. I know that's kind of a weird one. So if you want it easier, just go to this link. I'll, I'll put it in the comments below as well. Or go ahead and just scan this QR code. I promise you it's safe and I promise you it's not a Rick Roll. So I hope you'll keep coming back. I hope you enjoyed this first day of content. We've got 27 more days to go. So I can't wait to see you back here. Come back each day for a new video with the 28 day Get Hired Challenge where we're gonna help you get hired in cybersecurity.